Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. Today, we are going to talk about the coziest, most comfort foodiest food ever, winter freezer meals. Yay! Now, when you say cozy and comfort and the freezer all in the same sentence, it sounds like a bit of an oxymoron. Yes, but these but. are meals you can take out and enjoy while you're in. Now, we live in Canada, so it's cold here at the moment. Yes, we it is. We just got through like a massive cold spell, but we're out of that. Let me tell so you, cold. though, it's not as bad as what they're getting in the Northeast in the States. Like That's Buffalo, true. we're seeing... We're seeing the video and, and pictures of people like cut, coming out of tunnels between their cars <laughs> and their driveway. And the East Coast gets like our, our Nova Scotia people. We know you get it. We know yeah. you get it. Um, it's bad. But there's a way to stay warm. <laughs> Comfort food. Comfort food. <laughs> and today I've got my like hot cocoa. What is it? What does it say? Hot cocoa, cozy blanket, snowflakes. That's opposite. Sweaters, baking cookies, and warm fires. Although I thought it said at first warm fries, and I'm like, that's okay too. <laughs> I don't know the snowflakes. The snowflakes doesn't fit Do, on it that. It doesn't quite go. Although if it's snowing out, then you have the hot cocoa, I guess. Oh, all I yes. need is my mug that has, I was just warm drinking fuzzy. out of it. Yeah, it's like fuzzy socks. Okay, let's pause here. We'll get, your, we'll get your mug. Okay, oh, and we're back. Christy <laughs> got my mug. It's warm tea, fuzzy socks, soft blankets, and cozy sweaters. Let me tell you, if you want to get Charla something. Okay, first of all, she's a gift person. You know the love languages stuff. She's a gift person. If you get her something cozy, cozy socks, you will have her heart forever. It's true. I love, like, and my kids for Christmas, they got me, like, tea and socks and, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mugs. I got multiple mugs this year. So people know me and they, you know. So I am someone that likes to hunker down in the winter and have all those cozy things. And so these meals were actually, it was a little hard to pick because there's a lot, there's we a have lot, a lot of lot. really comfort food kind of freezer meals because we live here and we have to have those mm -hmm. warm and cozy meals. Uh, funny story, we have an entire video on just winter soups. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. We we right put a video. We'll put a link there. Uh, because yes, winter meals, winter soups. Uh, in winter. Canada, we know how to cozy up with our food. Winter. Yeah. Let's get to our meals. Let's get to our meals. The first freezer meal I'm going to tell you about and show you how to make is the best freezer chili. Of course, chili is on this list. What kind of list would this be for winter food if chili <laughs> wasn't on the list? Have winter without chili. Of course. So this is a really good chili. I make a good chili and then there'll be times where I'll phone Charlotte and be like, I'm just eating your chili and I know you know this, but darn, this is good chili. It is good chili. So we start out with one and a half pounds of ground beef that's been browned, some onion, some cloves of garlic that have been minced. Now, you need the kidney beans and you must have chili style beans with liquid. Heinz if you can, um, but I think other brands are probably okay. Diced tomatoes, tomato paste, chili powder, of course, cumin, paprika, a little bit of pepper, and then the maple syrup is the secret ingredient. You just need a bit and the sweetness cuts a bit of the acidity in your tomatoes. You're going to put them all together in the freezer bag and squish to combine. You're gonna take out the excess air and then seal it and lay it flat to freeze. On the day of cooking, you can thaw this. Actually, you might wanna take this one out. It's pretty big. You might wanna take this out the day before you cook it. And you can do it in your stove top and do a nice slow, bring it to temperature, let those flavors meld, or throw it in your crock pot. This is a perfect crock pot meal while you're out skating or sledding or other Canadian winter things that we do outside. The chili we always take with us when we go skiing mm, mm -hmm. and it just sits there in the crock pot all day then when they come in off the hill they can have a bowl of chili and some of my kids top it with sour cream some don't yep. and some have buns or bread and some don't and it's perfect yeah that's wonderful all right so this next one is a lazy chicken parmesan casserole you get the flavors of chicken parmesan without all the work. So we do have a good 
chicken parmesan recipe, but this is like a little shortcut, but you get all those good flavors in there. For this one, you're going to start with your chicken already cooked and cubed. That means it's gonna reheat really easily. So you're gonna throw those into your large freezer bag and pour in some pasta sauce. You can either use jarred pasta sauce or use our red sauce. You'll find the recipe for the red sauce in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. And then you're just going to take the air out of that large bag and seal it. That's all that goes in that bag. In a medium-sized freezer bag, you're gonna add some Parmesan and shredded mozzarella. Then again, you're gonna remove your excess air and seal that bag because you might know this already, but air is the enemy to freezer meals. It causes your freezer burn and we don't want any of that. So we're always a stickler for taking all the air that you can out of those bags. Then you're actually going to take a third bag, this this is one of our only meals that you need three bags for, but That's true. you're gonna add some panko or breadcrumbs, a little bit of olive oil, and some Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. Give that a shake to combine it, uh, remove the air again, seal that, and then you're gonna staple all three bags together above the seal, of course, so that you don't get any leaks. And on the day that you go to cook it, you're going to dump the chicken in the pasta sauce into your casserole dish. You're gonna to top it with your cheese and then that bag of breadcrumbs that are seasoned. Just bake it for 20 to 25 minutes because that chicken is already cooked. So this is a really nice, cozy winter dinner. Absolutely, it is a little bit of a little bit of garlic bread with that and some nice, you know, maybe some linguine. And did you know that you can make your garlic bread ahead and freeze it? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do all the things. And you could have a salad with this one. Oh, Why yeah. not? Why not? Nice little Caesar salad. That'd be great. Okay, this next one is one that I also like to take on ski trips with me. And it is the sausage tortellini skillet meal. My favorite thing about this one is how fast it is. It is so fast. It's so fast. It cooks really fast. And it's hearty. Like, that's yeah. why I bring it on the ski trips. Yeah, you're because right. it fills you up. So for this, we're gonna use some Italian sausage that we've shaped into meatballs and browned them. So when we're doing this, we're usually making a lot of meals at once. So we tend to fill an entire cookie sheet with the sausage meatballs and cook them all at once. And then when they're cool, we add them into the bags. So you've got some of those in your freezer bag and then you're gonna add some green pepper, yellow pepper, red pepper, mushrooms that are sliced, onion, a jar of pasta sauce, or again, you can use red sauce, and your tortellini. We use cheese tortellini for this one and you can buy the cheese tortellini usually at Costco in a three pack. So mm -hmm. this is a great one to make multiples of at the same time. So on the day that you go to cook this, seriously, you just dump your bag contents into the skillet. So you gotta thaw it enough so that you can, you know, dump them out, but you don't even have to fully thaw it. It is such an easy one. Yeah. You're gonna add a little bit of water, like a quarter to half a cup of water. Mm -hmm. And the the pasta, the tortellini just cooks right up in. The water will, will not only uh, steam it, but it absorbs into the pasta. So it really does just cook so fast and that cheese gets so nice and gooey inside and it's perfect. Okay, this beef and barley stew really is honestly kind of the perfect well, chili really is the perfect winter meal, but this is kind of a perfect one too. It's hearty, it is flavorful, and it is great for the beef lovers in your life, like my husband, because he just about ate this whole thing all himself. <laughs> um, so we start out by putting all of your ingredients in a large resealable freezer bag. We have round steak that's been cubed. Really, you can use any kind of steak or chuck that is going to be cubed up and that it's going to be slow cooked and it'll break down right it'll break down those those fibers and be nice and tender we're going to add in four carrots peeled and sliced an onion some 
green pepper, minced garlic, pearl barley, salt, pepper, thyme, basil, and you can't forget a bay leaf. Now here, it's already pretty sizable, so you can add in your four cups of beef broth right now, or you can wait and add it in uh, on the day of cooking and then you seal it up and then you realize you forgot to put the mushrooms in and then you open it back up and you put the mushrooms in. There's a good couple of cups of mushrooms in there so it gets even squishier and then we're gonna throw the label on there and lay flat to freeze. On the day of cooking you want to thaw this. I mean you can do this on your stovetop if you have enough time to just let it cook low and slow or man this is slow cooker heaven. You throw it in there for five to seven hours on low and it is a wonderful, wonderful soup. So I'm gonna pause here because I've mentioned the red sauce twice already, mm -hmm. and that led me to mentioning the club. So if you're new to our channel and you don't welcome. know, oh yes, if you're new to our channel, welcome. And if you're new, you might not know about our Freezer Meals 101 club, and that is where you can choose your recipes from our tried and true freezer meals. There's like a couple hundred plus yes. in there. And, and they're good. They are good. So they, keep they, interrupting They you, pass the I'm test. I'm excited about them. They pass the test. Yeah, they I do. I mean, they have to to be in there. We have a stringent test. Yes. If they, if they don't pass the Christie test, they're definitely out. But they have to pass the Charlotte test and she's picky. <laughs> so this is good. It's, this is good. It protects you from bad recipes. <laughs> So we do have some exclusive recipes in there, like the red sauce. Mm -hmm. What the real magic is though, is not the recipes. The magic is in... It's the system. It's the system. Okay, so here's how it is. You pick your recipes into a meal plan. Let's call your meal plan... Winter. Winter. Meals. Winter meals. Winter <laughs> meals. So you're gonna make like a couple of weeks worth of winter meals. You're gonna pick your wintery kind of recipes like we have here, and then what that does is it's going to generate a shopping list for you. Boop. Bam. Click the button. And you can take that and go pick up your meals. On that same list includes the prep list. So you know out of the seven onions that you had to buy for all these meals, you're going to dice three of them, you're going to mince one, and you're going to slice a couple. And then you're going to assemble these because all the recipes are right there with the assembly instructions because these are freezer meals. These are recipes that have been adapted for your freezer. They are going to freeze beautifully, they're going to thaw nicely, and they are going to cook beautifully. And then you're gonna freeze them, or wait a minute, I, I skipped a step. You're gonna print off the labels. You're gonna see our labels in our video, you've seen them. So you could just, again, click, 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 and you can print out your labels. They stick right on there, it has cooking instructions on it, so hey, your teenagers could take something out and maybe cook it if you're going to be home late. Or, or you can gift them to somebody who's going through a hard time and the cooking instructions are right on there. And you don't have to dig up the recipe again or look on online because the cooking instructions are right there. We've thought of everything because we love freezer meals. We've and taken the brain thing out of it and the reason that we're telling you again or for the first time if you're new here about the club is that very soon the price is going up forever forever so <laughs> that sounded we a little want harsh. you to lock in at the low price because it keeps it at that low price for you yeah so it'll always renew at that price it's a check. subscription base on the year and let me tell you the price is going up because honestly until this point people have been getting a deal we have improved it and improved it we've kept adding things adding more recipes we added labels there is a lot to it there is a lot to it, and it is a really wonderful system. Go and check out the link. Check out some of our customer testimonials. Man, people who are in the club. They love it. Love the and club. it's saving them hundreds a month. It really, so it really can. Even the price it's going up to is a bargain, like an incredible bargain. Yeah. But go check out the link so that you can lock in at the low price. Absolutely. Before it goes up. So we're going to get back to our freezer meals yes. for winter. This recipe has been around in our lives for a very long time. Yes. We've been doing freezer meals together for like 10 years, and this is one of, probably one of the earliest recipes we did. Mm -hmm. So it's no, we've done it many times, and it's a no-brainer that it's in the club. Yeah. Um, so it's the chicken and spinach Alfredo recipe. It's super simple, but it's super good. 
This is another one where things are already cooked going into it, so it's just a reheat. So it's really nice for those days that you're busy. Yeah, absolutely it is. So you start out by pre-cooking your pasta. So here's a tip, freezer meal tips from us to you. It's important to do this. You want to undercook, you know how it, on the box it t or the bag, it tells you al dente, eight minutes, if you want to give it an extra minute for it a little softer. You want to undercook by one or two minutes of that al dente tip, uh, temperature. So think about that when you're making these, because when you, reheat them, there is more cooking that happens and then they'll go mushy on you if they're already too fully cooked when you start. So we undercook our pasta a little bit. And, and we don't do gluten-free noodles. Don't do gluten. Thank you for mentioning cook that. Cook them on the day of if you're going to do gluten-free. Yeah, absolutely. They don't hold up to the freezer test. So that's, that's another important tip yes. for the gluten-free families out there. Yeah. That, um, People unfortunately end up with mushy noodles and then they feel bad and they're like, why didn't it work for me? <laughs> that's why. That's why. That's why. So yeah. we're going to just do our regular noodles. We're going to add them into our bag. We're going to add olive oil and get it all over our noodles. We're going to add this spinach. You can saute the spinach ahead of time, but you don't really need to. I mean, it's going in the freezer. It's going to shrink. It's going to do all the things. You're going to add garlic, some pesto, and add in some boneless, skinless chicken breasts that have been cooked and chopped. So that's also part of your prep, and that would be on your list of things to do when you're doing your prep, when, if you're in the club and you print it out, just so you know. Like, and all of it is on there. If you decided that you wanted to make these exact recipes, then the nice thing is, is that we already had that recipe of the lazy chicken parmesan that needed cooked cubed chicken. So oh, look, so you just, like, you just do, add extra. do more. It's already there. Like that is a nice. You're so right. You're so and and something you didn't think about the week before. There was a there was a sale on chicken, and that's absolutely when we do this. <laughs> that's right? when we do it's it. Like, then then we oh, make all the chicken gonna, meals. I'm gonna, all the because in the club you can filter and you can be like, okay, I have all this chicken breast that I got on sale. I need I chicken only recipes. Want chicken. Or we did a beef strips video. Oh, I'm going to put the link right put there Put the link up there because that was a good one. There was two for one beef strips. I, Buy one, get one. Yeah. And yeah. so we bought all, okay, we didn't buy them all because we're nice. We didn't buy the, yeah. the store out, but we could have because with freezer cooking, you don't have to worry about it going bad because these meals are going to stay fresh in your freezer for at least three months, if yeah. not longer, yeah. depending on the meal. And so you can take advantage of those sales and save so much money on the groceries. Yes. So yes, Christy's exactly right. You're gonna have gotten your chicken on sale. And thought, what am I gonna do with all this chicken? Oh yeah, I'm gonna make the lazy chicken parmesan and I'm gonna make the spinach and penne alfredo because it's so good and I'm gonna use up that chicken and it's not gonna go bad. So, perfect. I'm gonna carry on here because yep. I've added the chicken in now. And then I'm going to add in the Alfredo sauce. And we're gonna mix it around. Okay, now it's already in the bag, so it's a little tough to mix. So on the day of cooking, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get everything incorporated really nicely. But um, on the day of cooking, you're gonna to wanna to thaw your bag. You can put it in a, well, not the bag. You wanna empty the bag into a casserole dish. <laughs> and um, you can bake in a preheated oven. Uh, for at 350 for 45 minutes um, it isn't on this list but I know between you and I it's really nice if you just put a little bit of Parmesan on top yes because life is better with extra cheese life is always better with extra cheese <laughs> and a habit I've gotten from eating mini meals with you now is then there's also the red pepper flakes because always we just pretend we're a pizza house always we always have Parmesan and red pepper flakes absolutely <laughs> so okay this next meal is it had to make the list and you knew when you saw winter freezer meals uh-huh you knew that there had to be a soup in here somewhere right well we have the stew but and this is different a soup. there's a stew there, there's a soup Absolutely. so I had a hard time choosing I was like we have a chicken noodle soup that's um, like so like comfort foodie, right? We have a chicken so, noodle soup casserole that's so comfort foodie. We need to make that. We haven't had it in a while. You're right. I was actually just looking at that, and it used 
cooked cube chicken. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. And it, it tastes so it tastes like you're having chicken noodle soup, except it's in a casserole. And it's, it's got so good. It sounds weird, but it's good. I promise it's, it's good. weird. So I promise it's weird. I promise it's good. <laughs> I promise it's good. All right, tell us about I, the soup. I promise we're a little weird. We're weird. <laughs> there is no denying we're weird. <laughs> we it's forgot okay. to mention this. We're trying to mention it in every video in case people are new, but Christy is my neighbor. Yeah. And we discovered that we both did freezer meals after she moved in, and so we've been doing them like separately forever, but together for more than 10 years now. So we're How auspicious. Kind of experts now. It was very serendipitous it that we picked that up. Very those. serendipitous. <laughs> okay, the next the one soup. is this. Okay, oh yes, a soup. It's, soup. it's so hard to stay on track. Uh, I distract her. Sorry. Uh, you know, we distract each other. Okay. A little bit of that. Lasagna soup. Lasagna soup. Because it is like, it is one of my favorites. It's the ricotta cheese. It just puts it over the top. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm eating in a restaurant every time I have it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can't believe I got this out of my freezer. It's so good. Okay, so for your lasagna soup, you can either use ground beef or ground sausage. Much better with ground sausage, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But you can use ground beef if you have, you know, you're opposed to pork or whatever. Um, or if you just like are, the ground beef better. Then, so you've got your browned Italian sausage in your bag, and you're gonna add some oregano, basil, garlic, red pepper flakes, which we were just talking about, salt, pepper, two bay leaves some fennel seed. I add more into my bags than Christy's bags because she's not such a fan of the fennel. Nutmeg, onion, two cans of the fire roasted tomatoes, mm. tomato paste, and then you can add your chicken broth or beef broth now. Or if you want to save some space in your freezer, you can just you know, keep it in your pantry and add it on the day that you go to cook this. Yep. You will also need some Parmesan cheese, some ricotta, and five, five. lasagna noodles. It's we the have right tested amount. this. It shouldn't be four, it cannot be six. Five. This is five. And then you're you gonna break, break them, them up. up. Put them in a bag. I always put them in a bag so that they don't fly all over the kitchen. Oh, I just break mine up right over the bowl, but or oh. right over the pot, but you're just going to put this in, you could do it in your Slow cooker. crock pot, but yeah, we've done that. Um, but you can you also can do it on your stove we just do it on the stove. And then at the end, you're gonna add your lasagna noodles broken up, um, five exactly. And if you're Christy, <laughs> you're gonna break them in a bag. If you're me, you're just gonna break them over the pot. And you're gonna just keep cooking until the noodles are soft. Mm -hmm. And then to each individual bowl, mm. you're gonna add that parmesan and okay, ricotta put your soup in cheese. First. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Put the soup in. Soup goes in first. And then a little parmesan. And then your cheeses. And your cheeses. Your ricotta cheese. Plural. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you can top it with a little bit more of that sprinkling red of red flakes. pepper flakes. <laughs> so we made this one. I took this one recently when I went home for some family stuff, like to my brother's house. And we had a house fall, and he said, hey, I'm at the grocery store, do you need anything? And I said, you need ricotta cheese, <laughs> and you need some garlic bread, and Parmesan if you don't have it. And so we did, we had this for lunch, and everybody died over how good it was. It was so, so good. good. It was really, really good. It's so good, and it's like the flavors of a lasagna, mm -hmm. less work, less layering, but it's actually better than it's, a lasagna because yeah. it's like saucier and it's Ooh. cozy and sometimes lasagna can be almost dry like this yeah, is saucy this is oh saucy. it's so good it's so good anyway yeah i could talk all day about lasagna soup can you tell <laughs> actually <laughs> i'm like i'm thinking to myself i have a bag of lasagna soup in my freezer right now i don't maybe we're out. i should tell my husband to pick up ricotta cheese <laughs> <laughs> i don't because i gave it to my brother well i had it at my brother's house I said, I'll take, I'll take lunch. We'll, I'll be in charge of lunch. That was very nice of you it to was, share one of your best meals. Uh, <laughs> I know. Well, mostly I'm just like, you guys need to eat this. You guys need to try this. I know. It's so good. More and, taste testers. And I think it was maybe one of your bags because I think I had the spicy sausage in it. Oh, 
the hot Italian sausage. Like she always does the hot and I do the mild. And it was a little on the warm side. and But nobody minded. Like, it was... No, it's... Because then you put the good. cheese on. The spicier, the better. <laughs> so good. So good. Okay. So this next recipe is our barbecue meatloaf. It has... We have been doing this one forever. It is always a hit. And what's really nice about it is it comes with a sauce. So you don't even have to like think about what am I going to top this with? Because most people just put ketchup on, I think. It's a homemade barbecue sauce and you cook it right on your meat. So you can do this in a foil tray if you want and put the sauce right on, or you can do it in a bag and then you attach the sauce after. So we're going to start out with your raw ground beef. You need two pounds. Okay, it sounds a little weird, but promise, I promise it's good. You, you want both breadcrumbs, just regular breadcrumbs, but also graham wafer breadcrumbs. Yes, like the one that you would make in the base of a cream cheese. Cheesecake. Ke cheesecake, yeah. I don't make them, so <laughs> I don't like cheesecake. Christy hates cheesecake. I know, I'm weird, but that's what, you know, that's what I'm talking about. The graham cracker crumbs. We're gonna add some evaporated milk, a little bit of chopped onion that's been uh, minced maybe, chopped fine, um, a couple of eggs, some black pepper, and honestly, for flavor, this is a real boost. It's a just a package of dry onion soup mix. We have it in bulk, so we just use three tablespoons. That's the equivalent. So you're gonna mix that all together. You can do it by hand, or if you're doing a big batch, you might wanna do this in your stand mixer, if you have one. If you're making multiples, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise your, your arm might get tired. That's a lot of mixing. <laughs> Put it in your bag. So you can freeze this in your bag, and then on the day of cooking, you defrost it and put it into your casserole dish or your meatloaf pan, or I, te I tend to use an eight by eight cake pan. Um, I like the size of it and I find it cooks a little bit more evenly than in a bread, yeah. bread pan. You're gonna mix your barbecue sauce. It's brown sugar, dry mustard, ketchup, and chili sauce. I often don't have chili sauce at my house, so sometimes I'll just use other barbecue sauce or sometimes I don't know why I did this, but I had sweet chili, sweet oh. Thai chili sauce. And so it made it sweeter, but it was okay. Like it was just a little different flavor, but it was still barbecue-y because of the, the ketchup and the, the mustard and it was fine. So you put that in your bag on the day of, you're gonna spread that on top of your meatloaf and then cook it right in your oven for an hour. Uh, check in the middle, make sure it's cooked all the way through. It might need a few more minutes but it crisps up really nicely and it just adds really nice flavor to have that barbecue sauce right on top of the meatloaf. And this is something, if it's winter, you are serving this with mashed potatoes and creamed corn. You know that, right? So hopefully that gave you some really good ideas. It made me hungry. Yeah, I, I could <laughs> eat, I could eat. So, but we are gonna put a link right there to our winter soups video so that you can check those out as well. And just a quick reminder that the price of the club is going up soon. So you want to check out you that You want to get in on it now. I'm not in. even kidding. You are going to love it. Get in on it now. Thanks for joining us and happy cooking.